Good night, good evening, great people. I am a peace of mind and welcome to the basis of perseverance where their story may be your story and coming to you raw and uncut. And this evening, I would like to introduce my guest, Mr. Mark Carter. How you doing, sir? What's up, everybody? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's always a pleasure because uh, you never just know what you're going to say. You know, it's it's like you know, like honestly, you now you know, no, when you get the mic in your hand, nobody knows what Mark is going to say. So it's kind of like, idea. huh? That's the idea. Yeah, and I was so nervous at your mom, at your mom's wedding <laughs> when you got the mic. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like. <laughs> I was like, make sure he don't. I was like, I hope you don't say anything, love. I hope somebody get ready to take the mic just in case. But I can say you was good. You didn't, you didn't act up too, too bad. All right, thank you. I was trying to be a good son that weekend. Yeah, you didn't act up too, too bad. I could, yeah, you did pretty good. You did it. You did pretty good up there speaking. So I'm gonna thank give you that. <laughs> Any you. other time, it was like, oh uh, yeah, we gotta take the mic from him. Kids <laughs> around? No, I'm just playing. Okay, so for those who do not know you, who is Mark Carter as an individual? I, oh, hey, well, you're coming real strong late off the off the. I'm just saying, listen, I, it's deep. we gotta know, we gotta know. Shit, should I, 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 I don't have any incense burning and all that. I, that's deep. I don't, I don't really know, I guess. Who Mark Carter is as a person? I'm just a guy who loves to have a good time, mm -hmm. loves loves being around his family. Yeah, that's I don't that you <laughs> went deep with that one, girl. Jesus, you should, should have started off with what's your favorite restaurant or something. Good God, that's a, that's, a, that's a good. I think that's a good intro. I believe. I, you know, I know it probably stomped at you a little bit. It stomped a little bit, but you know, I like the. You know, I like to get a feel. I like people to get a feel of who a person is. You know. Yeah, I just like I just like to have a good time. I just mm -hmm. like to, you know, I love my, I love our family. I'm, I'm big on family. You know, and uh, yeah, that's it. Now, for those who don't know, mm -hmm. I am a comedian. That is my one true passion. I'm a stand-up comedian in Washington D.C. And. Uh, yeah, I like making people laugh, man. I love having a good time. And if I, sometimes me having a good time might rub some other people the wrong way. <laughs> yes. And and in life, you had to uh, can how we can. It's, you already said it off the break. It's uncensored, right? Uncensored. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So in life, you know, when you rub people the wrong way, with you having a good time, sometimes you just got to be like, you know, fuck them people. They should be having a good time as well. Why are they not having a good time? Why are you so sour, puss over here? Because I got the mic at my mama's wedding, and I'm setting it off, and the kids are all dance. Oh, wait. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm ready. I'm going. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, that's, that's, that's the natural. But I, like, I just like to have a good time. Yeah. And, you know, make people laugh. Yeah, and you do we a good job of that. Right? Yeah, you do a good job of that. I can't say effortlessly. <laughs> I can't say that. So, Mark, you know, life hits us hard sometimes. And um, sometimes we can't dodge the curveballs. I mean, it seems like it won't, like the storms never end. Like it's just one thing after another, one thing after another. So tell me, or can you pinpoint a time where life has just broken you? And at that point, at what point did you say, okay, Mark, this is what I need to do to get myself back together. Like explain that process for you when life has really broken you and what did you do to, um, how can I say, to rise above that circumstance or that situation? I guess all the way to rock bottom being homeless. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and trying to live something that I wasn't. Okay. You know what I mean? And it sent me to homelessness. Okay. It was fun at first. And I'm talking about the game, if you don't know. Mm -hmm. you know. It was fun at first, but then after, you know, friends die, people get locked up. You as well get locked up. You know what I mean? And then starting that cycle all over again, I had no home. Okay. 
But I end up having to say, you know what? What put me in this position? And at one, at, at one point, it was people, places, and things, you know? Okay. So I had to eliminate those that were negative around me that keep me, you know, in that vicious cycle. And, 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 and good family and support system is what mm -hmm. helped me get out. But it was a struggle. Oh, yeah, I, that was rock bottom, being homeless. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I've had ups and downs throughout my life afterwards, but mm -hmm. you know, that was the rock of the bottom. Okay. I'm talking about that was that was yeah, yeah. That was but family, family, and support. They got that got me out of that. Okay. Good support system. That's always good to have. Yeah. Good support system. Okay. See, that wasn't so hard. That was, see, you easing it. You easing it to us. <laughs> so, you know, I want to I want to talk a little bit about um, forgiveness. But before I touch on forgiveness, let's talk about friends, um, as in loyalty, honesty, trust, deceit, um, deception. That combination of words, they all relate to each other one in a way from your perspective talk to me about that combination of words that combination of words is scary as fuck when it comes to friends <laughs> i don't want none of them words around me when it comes to friends mm -hmm. those words come around that them words are scary talk to me you, you are drinking and saying these scary words the words are scary you just scared the shit out of me <laughs> <laughs> the way hey. you were talking, deception and <laughs> I'm over here getting shook. I'm sweating and shit. I don't want none of those. That's what that's what I feel when I hear those words mm -hmm. when it comes to friendship. I don't want any of that around when it comes to friendship. And if I feel an inkling of any one of those words come around to friendship, then I have learned in my 40 years of life mm -hmm. that, hey, maybe I have to cut these people or these friends off. Correct. But yeah, when I hear those words, frightening. <laughs> Your facial expression says it. <laughs> so, how would you go about, um, I guess I would say, using your discernment or just observation of the individuals that you will allow in your circle to get close to you, if you would allow individuals to get to you, um, get in that personal space to be in your inner circle? What elements <laughs> plays a part? <laughs> I'm sorry, you said a what again? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what elements plays a part in you allowing people to be in your inner circle, to be next to you? I don't really know. I guess, I guess if I can, if, if, if the energy, I just, I just have to be, you know what I mean? It's just uh, the energy. Mm -hmm. a point, point in case, because we uncensored, mm -hmm. and I don't get shit sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> there was some energy that was off at mm -hmm. my mom's wedding from one person. Okay. I'll tell you off air. Okay. For one person. And after that, the, that weekend, mm -hmm. we, we, we're around her. I never want to be in the same area as her because her whole energy was just off. Okay. So I meet someone and it feels that way. I, I have not felt that way before in a long time. Correct. When I can feel that, and it was just, what? You know, that type of, what? What is going on here? Mm -hmm. That's how I evaluate. I don't evaluate people on like, like you could say something crazy out your mouth, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You could, you know, dress crazy, you know what I mean? But I judge people on the energy mm -hmm. that you throw back at me. And yeah. I hope the same way, because I want positive energy that I throw out to people. Yeah, that's what I want. I think so when, energy, I feel, when I feel negative energy, mm -hmm. that's when it's a wrap. You got to move away. I think with energy, uh, I think a lot of people uh, feel the energy. Energy is a is a major thing right now. It's a major element with vibes with people. I'm an energy person as well. So a person with good energy, I can feel that. If they have like a shaky energy or negative energy i can feel that that shakiness if you be like uh something ain't quite right but you can't pinpoint it 
Or you can flat out and, and feel the negative energy and be like, okay, I don't need to be by that person. Even with the ones that are kind of so-so that you're not sure of, you still kind of stay away from those type of energy because you don't want it to jump on you or have that negativity or that flip-flop type energy. You know, you want to be, have a positive energy. And positive energy is good for the body. You know, it's less more that you got to think of, okay, well, if this person is this person like this, that person like that. And I also think, even when you're out in public, you can feel the energy if something is about to happen. So you can always get yourself or remove yourself from that atmosphere for whatever goes down, goes down. I've had That's, that scenario too. That is kept me alive. Mm -hmm. in this. Yeah. And I mean, literally. I felt something, mm -hmm. I have left, and literally I've heard the story after, man, you don't know what the fuck just happened when you left, man, shit mm -hmm. went wild, and I'm like, woo, mm -hmm. oh, and I was gone. Good thing you listened so to bad. your energy, no. yeah, <laughs> you paid mind to your energy. Okay, I like that, energy, energy, your energy. So, I want to move on to, you know, we talk about the friends, the Lord to the seat. Um, let's talk about forgiveness. You know, forgiveness lifts a heavy load off your shoulders. Forgiveness can open up opportunities for you. Forgiveness is a blessing within itself. So, have you ever find it hard to forgive or do you forgive easily? Could you give me an example or recall a situation or issue where you have or have not forgiven someone for something? So, me and my uh, stepfather, who raised me, basically by my father, right? Mm -hmm. So, for years after him and my mom got divorced, for years, for a good year, almost damn near like three years, we finally got good like three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. But for years, for some strange reason, boom. You know what I mean? I don't know why, don't know why. But, and I know I would be, I, I, and I'm going to forgive him. I know I was angry at him for certain things, and I'm quite sure he was angry with me on certain things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we held that anger for so long that when we saw each other, boom, clash. Having said that, now, I, in my mind, I ended up, as I got a little older, I had to say, you know what? I forgive this man for things that he done to me. Yeah. You know, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking about as a child. I'm talking about as an adult, as a grown man, like, oh dog, I'm your son, why would you do that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why would you, why would you deceive me like that? A word that I don't like that scares me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Good, bad, and the ugly. This is my dad. Yeah. This is my father. You know what I'm saying? So I had to put that, I had to forgive him and say, you know what? We good. You can come over, see my family, all that. Mm -hmm. And I told him this on Thanksgiving one year. And then that's when we finally, we good now. Because I actually told him, he was saying, he had said one time to me, he was like, I should call my real father, right? I should finally like call him, right? Mm -hmm. And I have done that. You know, I've tried to reach out to him, but the man just don't want to be who he was. Yeah. So I had to tell him, you are that guy. You were that guy, good, bad, and ugly. So can you stop saying that from now on? Because that's just not going to happen. You know, you're my dad. I'm calling you. And that's how I had to, that's, that's, that's my forgiveness story. Okay. That's a good, that's a good forgiveness. Cause you took that, you took that step. You took the upper hand and be like, okay, I'm just going to flat out and deal with this. Like a, you know, like you should. You know, you took that upper hand and you stepped forward and you took, I just say you took accountability on your be on your half and you made that approach to straighten everything, to get everything straightened out and balanced to open back up that relationship so y'all can get back in good terms. And I think that's, that's really good. Most people wouldn't do that, you know. They'll still be clashing. They wouldn't take that extra yard, walk that extra yard to do that, you know, but you did. And that's a good thing because you want them a part of your family, you know. You want them to know. Yeah, and I had to because also, again, when you hold shit like that, it's like energy. Like, yeah. if people can 
around. Like, you know, well, nobody want to come around on holiday, you know, or, or, or family gatherings. And they already like, oh, Lord, okay, look, <laughs> seven o'clock. Yeah. I'm Uncle Charlie. You know what happened, Uncle Charlie and Pop, they, they start to drink and it's going to be a fight. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. nobody wants that type of shit. Yeah. Unless you into that type of shit, that's pretty funny when it goes down. <laughs> they can't fight any fucking way and they too drunk. But well, nobody want to be around that shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That was basically what was going on. Like, they were having to sometimes on holidays, like, okay, Mark's getting ready to come over. So he da, 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 da. Yeah. That had to, like, stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. come on, man. That has to stop. Yeah. Hey, you tell them the truth. Okay, I like that. So since we're on that 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 little flow right there, I want to talk about living in the past. You know, a lot of times people always revert for the, um, revert back to their past, and sometimes it just depends on the part of their past. So I'm not saying like forget your past, uh, but too often people always say, you know, this happened to me, da 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 that's why I can't do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So pretty much they use their past as a scapegoat and as a reasoning as to why they can't do what they need to do for themselves now and for their future. Have you ever found yourself going back and reliving your past um, for any reason? And if so, in what form or factor or what way? And how did you surpass that and get over that bridge? I'm sorry. I've never done that. Okay. Never. I have a buddy mm-hmm. that's like, you know, who, you know, my, my best friend who sometimes he, he always wants to talk about back in the day and what if we'll go back. And I always tell him, what the fuck are we not going back? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it's not happening. Like, yeah. No, what would what, what would be like if we were back in the eighties and we were young and crack was hitting? We didn't even be on crack and we sell it. That's even it. No, we're not going back. Like, come on. Yeah. Move forward. I've always moved forward. He always, every time we watch Snowfall, every time, every time we watch Snowfall, <laughs> what, would be, what would be if it was us back then? And I'm like, we'd even be selling this shit or on it. Do you see the show? Yeah. It's simple as that. Yeah. That made, <laughs> like, that made sense. That like, made sense. On. I, I, I've never like, and, and, and to say on, to, 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 to answer your question on, have I ever like, if it wasn't because of this, because of that, da 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 da? Mm-hmm. No, because today it was me in every decision of my life. Mm-hmm. So having said that, I can't put my finger on. Well, it was you because of this, or it was because of this, because of that, and the crowd was not fucking into it. No, I can't do it. it was me. Yeah. However, it was it was me, and I put myself in that position. So you gotta eat crow. Yeah. So I like that because what you just what you just explained is that you take accountability for your own actions. Yeah. So I, I yeah. like that. I like that. If you find it very rare that a lot of people do that, especially men, you know, a lot of men don't hold a, hold themselves accountable for a lot of things that they do. It's always somebody else's fault, pointing the finger, or blame, or whatever. So but see, but see, here's the thing, there. You know, and you know me. I, I yeah. Know, for a long time, I was a piece of shit. <laughs> and wasn't supposed to agree or say, yeah, I know, or what? <laughs> I don't want to say. Agree. Okay. I'm not, not going to agree. agree. I'm, people, I'm just going to say, okay, I'm not going to agree. The people, and the people who know me, who even watching this, are going to see this. They're going to be like, you know what? You want? They're, they're going to say, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was a piece of shit mm-hmm. in some aspects of my life. You know what I'm saying? But okay. I had to clean that shit up. Yeah. Cause it don't smell good. It might make the grass green, but it don't smell good. <laughs> I understand. I don't. Yeah, I wasn't trying to agree. <laughs> you be throwing these questions I'm like, I'm supposed to agree and say, yeah, you were. <laughs> I ain't want to do. It. I ain't want to be rude like that. But you know, I get what you said. I'm not from from how long I know you. I wouldn't say. I would just say like you had some little kinks in your life that you were screwing up and you had to mesh it back together and get it to the, get yourself together like okay mark like get it together you know don't mess this up type scenario so we go I ain't gonna go to that extent or really agree and agree i'm just gonna you know soften it up a little bit 
<laughs> in a nice way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you. Oh, you know, Kakaraya, nigga, but nah, I ain't gonna do that. Oh, <laughs> see, that's why I told you I needed a drink for this one. I needed to refresh my drink for you. <laughs> Uh, and, I, and I switched drinks because before I was drinking pineapple, um, pineapple rum. Now I'm drinking mango. Okay. So, yeah. All right. That's that. I might, oh, go, I, I might go get one at halftime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you <laughs> might need to go get one at halftime. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about um, dimming your light. You know, a lot of times... Individuals dim their light for many reasons. It could be because they don't want the attention or it could be because they have that friend that's insecure about themselves and they feel like they have to dim their light for them. And then other reasons, it could be for job related um, situations that you dim your light because you don't want to overstep your boundaries or what have you. So pinpoint a time if you can that when you dimmed your light and why did you dim your light how did it make you feel and do you still have those uh current situations of dimming your light and if so why so i guess i guess and 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 i and this is the only way i can the only thing i can think of i guess dimming my light would be um like when my daughter was first born Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and again, again, this was my choice, my decision. Mm-hmm. But I dim my light per se in in common. Okay. I mean, you know what I'm saying? She was first just born, so now I can't really go out. I don't really want to go out every day like that. Because mm-hmm. I want to my baby. Oh, look at little baby. Oh, boo, 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 <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I guess in that, in that, that's the only thing I can think of. Because other than that, you know me, I'm not dimming shit. Yeah. My light is bright than a motherfucker. <laughs> Where I go, God damn it, it's bright. It's bright. I'm light. I'm already light skinned. So why not? Why not turn it off? <laughs> I knew you was going to say that. Why not? Why not turn them off? Well, come on now. Yeah. Why I, dimming this? Come on. You're still going to see me. So why not just brighten it the fuck up? But, and then and other than that, yeah, that was probably only it. But again, my choice, my decision to dim my little comedy light for a minute, not really okay. hit the stage, not really go out like that, yeah. you know. And I don't regret it because mm-hmm. me and my daughter, we have a great relationship, so. That's awesome. That's a good thing. I mean, I think, you know, that's that's a good thing because you wanted to spend more time. She was an infant, so why not? Because comedy was always going to be there. It was just that her growing up and you missing those, you know, important stages of her being young and growing up. So I think that was, a, you know, that was a good decision to make. I'm not sure how many people would make that decision, but that was actually a good decision. You know, so I'm not mad at you for it. (laughs) So I want to ask you this. You said you're 40, right? Yeah. Okay. So you're 40. So what is something that you know, learned over time that you wish someone would have told you when you was 20 years old? Or what is something you would have told, what you would tell your 20 year old self that you know now? Leave them bitches alone, nigga. Leave them alone. Go to New York. Stop fucking with them bitches. Get off the block. Stop trying to be a thug. You're not. You're funny. Get the fuck out of here. Go to New York. Stop fucking with them bitches. Stop. Don't do it. I see you about to do it. You're doing it now. Stop. Get the fuck up and leave and go to... That's what I would have told my 20-year-old self. Okay, so... Straight up up and down the rail. That's what I would have told... So pretty much you was kind of wild at 20. You was just doing... What? 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 Yes. When did you start comedy? When when did you start doing comedy? Let me ask you that. I I started when I was... uh, Right when I was what? 27? Okay. Some shit like that. Okay. It's been a while. Okay, gotcha. So what what calmed you down? Because you said you was kind of loose at 20. So what actually calmed you down? Nothing. Homelessness. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, I heard the story, but still, that we didn't get that. We didn't get that part as to why you was homeless. You, I know, I heard the street life, friends was getting killed, people huh. getting locked up, but yeah. you didn't go a little bit into detail. So when you said what you just said, then huh. that's what. But that's, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, all that mixed into you know what I'm saying. Friends, like I said, that's what got me. Like, okay, it's time to get yourself together. Okay. First thing you have. Job, you know, shit like that. You know what okay. I'm saying? Okay. You can't live that, you know, that first week of the job, da 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 da. Mm -hmm. Then, after, uh, I'd say, I think my mother, yeah, my mother, she was like, you should go and da 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 da. And I was like, all right, what do I do? She was like, look in the newspaper back in the day when you had to look in the newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, look up where open mics are. And I went, and me and, you know, me and my daughter and mother, she went with me, and, uh, I guess the rest is history. Okay. You know, for that me starting off, mm -hmm. I got the taste of it because I knew I wanted it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was like you know, it it was, it was I guess I, I guess it was like a dope fiend mm -hmm. when he come home and he's clean, but then he see his other dope fiend friend shooting yeah. up that hair from. He's like, I, I want that. I know it. I want it. Mm -hmm. That's how it was, and now I need it all the time. It's the greatest feeling in the world. Okay, so you're going out to something that you want. So, what was your first gig? What was your first stand up gig? Where was it? Shit. Ah! It was fucking. Um, 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 I forget the name of this fucking. Uh, this, this fucking. Shit! Damn, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Oh, man. Me, Tony Woods. I met uh, Aaron Jackson there. Fuck. Samson, Corey. Oh, what the fuck? Name is the thing. Oh, God, I can't remember. It'll come to me right now, but I already, I, that, that, uh, the, place that I'm, the place that I'm thinking about. A lot of people that I just name are doing shit. Like, yeah. go, go, go go to the names I just said, and you'll know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, damn, yeah, fuck, what was the fucking name? Ian used to run the bitch. That was Tony, that was Tony, Tony Woods. That okay. was his first. What the fuck name was that? Damn. But anyway, yeah. I so was, I cannot so, remember. I'm sorry. So is Ian the one that put you on, or who put you on? No, you 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 go and you sign up. Oh, you just oh, it's just a sign up like a okay. like an open mic. Just sign up. Back, you had to sign a list. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now you know. Now people know me. I can just go and get on. You know what I'm saying? The places and shit. Okay. But yeah, that's, put your name on a fucking list. Okay. And you go up accordingly, like a like an open mic type thing, open poetry yeah. type. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. But no, it was comedy. It was that, it was yeah, that I know it's comedy, but it's yeah. the the sign up list is more like it's like open mic too. So, but they have it for comedy. See, I didn't I didn't know they had like a sign up list for comedy like that for like an yeah. open mic type. Yeah. Yeah, and you better hope, pray to God, you get there early enough with your name ain't motherfucking fifteen or twenty. Cause you might not go on. Oh, wow. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> All right, you guys. We have had a um, eventful. I don't even want to say eventful. We we've had a good first half. Love. Yeah. yeah, it's just love. My sister. Here we go. Hey, we're we're gonna return. We're gonna take a brief break right here. And we'll return to you momentarily. Hi, I'm Lakita Logan Range, the creative director of Live and Lavish Events, where we specialize in creating unforgettable special events and weddings for you and your guests. Live and Lavish Events is a full-service wedding, event management, and decor company. From concept to execution, we will make sure that your event runs smoothly 
and it is absolutely flawless. So for your next event, remember, live and lavish events, your key ingredient to having a spectacular event. All right, you guys, welcome back. Again, I have my guest, Mr. Mark Carter. Wong Wong Wong. <laughs> As you guys didn't know, if y'all didn't catch the beginning, of course you can always, you know, record or re rewind back to the beginning or start from the beginning. You can watch the whole thing. Either way, it'll still be streaming. So let's get back into it. You know, we had a a live conversation so far. And it's been raw, unfiltered, as we do. Now, my question is now, is let's talk a little bit about, it's not even a question. Let's just talk on the top, the, the topic of comfort zone. A lot of times, people are stuck in their comfort zone. And it could be various reasons. I mean, some people could be retired. Um, their kids out the house. So they just feel like, uh, I could just chill. I don't really got to do anything. But on the flip side, they can be doing other things, you know, being more involved in the community, uh, volunteering, mentoring, or what have you. So everybody in their comfort zone for their own specific reason. Have you ever found yourself just lingering in your comfort zone? And if so, at what point did you say, okay, Mark, get it together. You know you could be doing more. You know you could be doing this, that, and the third. Right now you just chilling. Push yourself to the extra limit. Talk to me about that. I mean, yeah, that was uh, it's like a couple some years ago. In my it, like my it, it, I guess yeah, I was I, I I got to a point where it was just like and. I guess what I had to do was I had to, relationship-wise, I had to, you know, in that part of my life. Mm -hmm. It was hard, it was hard, but I had to do it. Because I was, I don't know if it was me or it was her, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But at one point it got to, you know, like you said, comfortable, but on a comfort level that was like, Nah, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm really not, I'm trying to, I'm, in my mind, I know I'm trying to move, I want to do things, but I, for some reason I can't, I'm, I'm stuck, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. you know, and then I met, you know, someone who showed me, you know, yeah, you can now, you know, do things and and motivate me and hey, do this and hey, do that and da 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 da. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm because at the end of the day, I don't want anybody to think that I'm a piece of shit because I'm not, but I was, I'm a reformed piece of shit. <laughs> but because <laughs> they always say, like, they always think, like, if a, like when a woman, when, when if a woman leaves, right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I kicked it. I kicked it for a second. That's but so when good. the woman leaves, and she's kind of like sometimes applauded. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When she's fed up. You know what I'm saying? But when a guy does it, he's almost looked at like a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Trash. Why is that? Why is that the double standard? When at the end of the day, you tell the woman, hey, you have to do you, look out for you. Make yourself, you know what I'm saying? But then when the guy does it, he's looked at differently in society. Mm -hmm. Why? But I had to do that. And by me doing that, you know, my life mm -hmm. and my, even my relationship with my daughter is better. Like, okay. I'm, 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 I guess I'm, I finally have become an adult, mm -hmm. <laughs> per se. Okay. You know, but yeah, I had to do that. 
because I was it was it was comfortable. But a comfort level, like I said, was like, nah, I don't I don't, don't want to just do this. You know, you know what I'm saying? Well, let's, I want to do more. Yeah. So I had to for me, I had to go out and you know. And I don't feel great. I just, I, you ain't, I ain't never thought about it like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of do what's best for you, what you need to do for yourself. So pretty much you, re you removed yourself from a situation that you felt was hindering you. But if I, if I can say that, yeah. that to the aspect. Yeah. And being yeah. that, being that, you, that you're away from that situation now, the relationship is better than when it was when you were there in that right. situation. You know, sometimes, sometimes it takes that. Sometimes uh, when people are too comfortable, things just go way off bound. It's not like what it was in the beginning. You know, things, you know, you may want something, this person may not want it. Or they're not, you guys are not striving for the same thing. Y'all don't, you know, desire the same things in life or the goals are off. However, whatever it may be, but you... Especially, able to when, you, especially when you're just arguing for just... Just, well, you shut the fuck up. No, you shut the fuck up. Like, you don't even know what you're arguing about anymore. <laughs> you just reminded me of Sixth Sense when you did that. Like, you was talking to her. <laughs> you know, so, like, that, 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 when it gets that to that point, it's yeah. like, what are we, what the fuck are we arguing? You're just arguing yeah. now. There's no purpose in, there's no purpose in each other's life for each other, like, in that capacity. Yeah, at that point, if it's just arguing for no reason, then, yes. Yeah, it's not healthy. It's toxic. You got to go y'all separate so y'all can work with yourselves and grow. And, you know, it, it turns out better for, for you, them, and the child that's in the middle, you know. Exactly. So that's it. That's it. That's, that was a good decision, what I say. Because you found somebody that could, you know, encourage you, motivate you, and show you that there is a way. This is possible. Let me help you. Let me show you how to do it if you're accepting, you know. So that's a good thing. You know, you get out of one situation, you learn, and you get into another one, and you grow. Simple as that. So having said that, you know, to everything, there's a season, right? And in that, I like to say, you know, people are included in seasons. And as you know, it's no coincidence that you come across paths with individuals, would you say? Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. So, and when people come into your life, it's either for you to uh, teach them something, them to teach you something, you to be used, abused, however, whatever it is that their purpose, um, that you have come into contact with this person. Have you ever found yourself holding on to people or trying to hold people or try to carry people along with you, knowing that you should lead them in that season and not carry them on to the next season with you. Cause they're like, you know, just baggage. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I had, uh, last year I had to, I had to do that mm -hmm. with a, with a friend I grew up with. Okay. Excuse me, I won't go into specifics of, yeah. you know, of long ass bullshit ass story, mm -hmm. but I had to like, that energy that 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 that, he, that, that, that person was giving off and, and, and the things, you know what I'm saying, that were being said to me, about me, over the situation that had nothing to do with me yeah but only because of other so i had to you know it's crazy when you do it you i had to basically block them out off social media and block <laughs> my phone and all my life that's crazy how you gotta do the friend you know what i'm wow. saying yeah but i had to do that and i i I, I, I know he's doing all right. Mm -hmm. I pray, you know, nothing happened to him, but it got to a point where I felt that I was like, yeah, this probably is the end of this season for us. Mm -hmm. I'm going on to season five and this 
character's probably not going to be here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, even on me, like season 20, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, that's, that's, that's coming. Sometimes everybody not meant to uh, come along with you on your journey. And if they're not adding value to your life, then the question is, you know, what purpose do they serve? So you you have to definitely reevaluate people that's in your life. Um, what's their role? What's their purpose? And if you can't answer that just like that, then you know, okay, well, this person is not supposed to be on this journey with me, but you can deal with them from a distance, you know? So, um, you know, sometimes it's hard, sometimes it hurts, but you got to do what you got to do that's, that's best in your best interest you know if y'all are on the same page or the same thought press thought processing of everything then you have to lead them where they at until they want to do better for themselves you know but why would you but why would you do that though people look at you like you would like so like sometimes you like look, look you an asshole like because i want to cut you off why am i why am i the bad guy but see that's that and that from my I'm perspective, why, why they do why it in general, but I'm just saying, like, if that happens, and in, in, in even other people's like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. a stigma put on, you know, like, okay, I'm just giving you an example, like, the whole, like, uh, and please, women, don't get mad at me, but you strong, independent women, that you know, y'all, there was a movement started, especially Beyonce, when she put that song out in the motherfucking world. You know, who run so, the world? <laughs> but, and, and, yeah. So what happened was, was a lot of women who were going around saying, "Hey, it's about me. The year of me." And that that year turned into the next year, turned into the next year. But anyway, that's what happened. Mm-hmm. But I came because I ain't gonna lie. Look, ladies, I took a page out your book. All right, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I did that, but I got called an asshole for it. <laughs> but I get it. I get it sometimes. And I, now I feel your pain. Like, why do you have to be? If, yes, let it be. Why is that? Let it be. If you want for yourself to be better, why not do that in all aspects of your life? And you get shit on if, <laughs> 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 if anybody else doesn't like it. Yeah. Hey, they got to deal with it. If they don't like it, oh well. As long as you, you know, you you got. I, I tell people you got to do what's best for yourself. You know what's good about women? Mm-hmm. The way you can say that, <laughs> and they're gonna be like, you know what? She's right. But if you Everybody, say, <laughs> if I say, like he's a piece of shit. <laughs> oh man, it's a lot of double standards and a lot of things. It's kind of crazy. It is, and but I, I look at it as you know, you gotta do what's best for you, regardless of what people say or how they feel. You gotta do what's best for you. If cutting the person off, oh well, let them feel whatever they feel, and then hopefully they come to the realization, like they do this self evaluation on themselves and be like, yeah, I was wrong. Yeah, that was my that was my fault. Hold hold themselves accountable for their actions as to why you you know, block them or decided like, we can no longer be friends until you get yourself together. Maybe some somewhere along the line, later on, down the line, a couple of years from now, that person may come back and y'all may be the best of friends again. You know, they could have had a whole new leaf turnover, changed their lives, doing this and third. So, you know, sometimes you have to do that to make, make people realize like what type of friend you had. You know, like they say, they don't realize what they had until it's gone. So sometimes some people got to feel that, you know, that's what I'm saying. What she said. Huh? What she said. I said what, what she said. said. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this, just a little bit off topic. Now, you're the only boy, right? You have, you and, have and, all and, sisters. And, a, and, a, and yeah, and, and a whole, and a, and a whole bunch of sisters. Yeah, you have a whole yes. bunch of sisters. So, how does that feel? Like, how did that? How does that? How does that feel being the only, uh, the only guy and surrounded by your sisters? Like, what? What have you learned from them, as it relates you to dealing with women? You want to know how it feels? Yes. You ever seen? You ever seen Punch Drunk Love, with mm-hmm. Adam Sandler? All right. I think I have. All right. All right. Everybody. 
after it's over, mm-hmm. Google Punch Drunk Love and Google the scene with him, him and his sisters. Okay. That is my life. Okay. <laughs> they terrorize me. They torture me. They don't. They don't. They, they don't sugarcoat shit when it comes to me. But I think it's now, good right now. Now, Brandon, if anybody else tries to do anything, mm-hmm. yeah, they gonna pounce like a bunch of lionesses in the on on on, on a kill. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing though, because they keep yeah. you in check about stuff. Point they they check point you. Hmm? Point and kick. Point. They tried the, the some people at my mama's wedding. And y'all, whoever y'all, you know y'all gonna see this. <laughs> some people at my mama's wedding, oh, I guess, feeling some things that I was doing, mm-hmm. which I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. I just took it upon myself to, hey, why not be the DJ's hype man and get this party started? Me and you, damn, you damn, you damn, was turned up. But no, <laughs> old Mark might have been causing trouble. So my sisters, heard what was being said about me and oh yeah the lioness was getting ready to pounce you didn't even know that did you <laughs> no clue yeah i'll tell you all hey, I, after this is over i'll tell you i got yeah. you yeah 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 but that's how it is growing up with it like growing up and even still now like they give it to me they give they it were to the you. ones they, they were the ones to tell me told me you're a piece of shit. my baby sister christiana Tell me all you are trash. I can imagine. I can just picture her saying that. Like, <laughs> I, to my face. yeah, I, I can picture her saying that because I actually spent um, while your mom was waiting for everyone to come to get dressed. I was sitting at the house with your mom and uh, your baby sister, and she had me like, <laughs> it's kind of like, so, you know, yeah, she she, she, she seemed like told, that type. She, she told my girlfriend that she she told my woman. Mm-hmm. You with him? He is trash. Like the first time she met her. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like he is trash. Why are you with him? Why you she was like, she was like, and then she was like clean with him. She was like, you're a pretty girl. Why are you with him? He oh, is just sh- Yeah, like <laughs> look at her. I damn, like, what the fuck? But that's my sisters. They you know understand. They honest with you and they let you know what it is. If you messing up, they're going to let you know. And that's a good thing, but they also uh, take up for you, watch out for you too, if oh, anybody yeah. got out of order. So I, I, I did pick up that. I did pick up that energy. It's, it's, you know, I did pick that energy up. And they all have good energy, you know. So I did pick that up and everything. So they, they still are protective of you. All right. I, I love y'all, Robin, Michelle, Christiana. Vanessa, Latoya, <laughs> Teresa, Patrice. <laughs> I love all y'all. No, oh, shout out. I got you. All right. So as we're coming to a conclusion, you know, I'm going to give you a, a statement. And I want you to close us up after my statement. Okay? You ready all for right. it? All right. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. So... You know, what we go through is only temporarily. And it's not necessarily who you are. But what we go through makes us into the person that we need to become. Talk to me. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. See, you buddy. See, I knew it. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's do it. Do it. Do it. What? Okay. <laughs> See, you know what? I told you I needed a drink for this episode. <laughs> what we go through is temporarily, you know? And what we go through is not who we are. But what we go through makes us into the individual we need to become. And what am I supposed to say? You're supposed to close it up. You're supposed to add on. You, you didn't get that? Well, how you missed that? Like, oh, oh, okay. How okay. you missed that? You see that? Okay. <laughs> Look here. Make sure you're not fucking a bunch of bitches. You're not fucking a bunch of niggas. You're getting your money. You're staying with your family, keeping them close, and you're keeping negative energy about your life. You do that. 
I mean, you can fuck some bitches and fuck some niggas if that's what your thing is. But don't let that get all in your mind. Even if you're in a relationship. And you're like, ah, oh, I think I'm settling. I'm going to be stuck. Uh, get the fuck out of there. The pussy and the dick got you fucking mesmerized. So if you do that, maybe have a little toga too or some cannabis, have a drink or two or some potion. And your life will be all right. You'll be happy. Live your life. That's because what I'm going to do. I'm going to live my life. I'm happy. I love you, Larry. <laughs> I love you too, Mark. <laughs> this has been another episode of the Basics of Perseverance. I have a peace of mind. This is my guest, Mark. Thank you for been on this evening i know you had just got off of work and you came in to get it done i really thank you oh um, can i tell them follow me at i'm i was about to get go ahead and say Kyle. Oh, just about to tell it yeah go ahead go ahead go go ahead and tell them where they can follow you at please let them know where you, they can follow you at <laughs> all right you can, you can just follow me mr van Cotter on instagram mark card on facebook you know what i'm saying i got other drinks you know what i'm saying mark Carter comedy dot com you know what i mean follow me there you know i'm around you'll see me <laughs> all right you guys i'll make sure i put all his information um in the information box below and be sure to check him out on all his social media platforms until next time peace and blessings